everybody. Welcome to A Tatter of Fact. We're at the Girls Inc. studio in Las Vegas. And today I got my wife back with me, Kat. And we got little Delilah. Say hi, Delilah. <laughs> she don't care. She don't care. <laughs> she don't care as long as she's got a lap. And she prefers your lap. She does prefer my lap. I know. I think she loves you more than me. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I think she does. No, she's, she's like a mama's. She loves me. Yeah. But I'm kind of like the dad. Yeah. With all the fur babies, right? Yes. I'm the one who gets on the ground and plays and roughhouses. Yes. And throws the ball and all that stuff. But you're like mama. You're the one who feeds them and, okay, you know, you know remember, babies them. Remember when Samson hurt his little paw? He ran right to me. Yes. I do yeah. remember that. He's he's dramatic. Yeah, very, he's a drama queen. Little very Samson, dramatic. very yeah. dramatic. He is our little boy. He's the only boy in a house of what four women, four <laughs> yeah, girls, four girls. Me, you, Delilah, and Tula. Mm -hmm. he's spoiled rotten. Yeah. So thanks for coming on today. This is kind of last minute. Uh, you're welcome. And I know. So what I wanted to talk about today, and I wanted you on here, Cat. Um, you don't tattoo or anything like that, but. I mean, we've been together for 17. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm going to say it. Don't worry. Glorious years. Yeah, you're so good. Yeah. So, you know, like our routine is, um, you know, when we, we go upstairs at night, we crawl in bed and we get on our phones and we get caught up on like uh, answering, you know, questions on Messenger, Instagram, whatnot, mm -hmm. things like that. <clears throat> and so, and usually, like, when something's fascinating, like, I get a really good question or a really good comment, uh, or just the opposite, I get a comment that, you know, kind of pisses me off, I will read them out loud to you. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. I'll read them out loud to you and and whatnot. And sometimes I'll even read you my answer and how I respond. And even if... um a response like totally pisses me off. I never respond back with anger or anything offensive or rude or any snideness like in my tone at all. I just don't respond that way. I used to mm -hmm. when I was younger, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I've grown up. I just take the high road. It's just not how I want to conduct myself. And it's just not how... I want to interact with people. It just, just doesn't make me happy. You're, you're really good at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd say you're better than me even because sometimes I get really angry and I have to take it a few hours before I'll respond. Yeah, well, if I get super duper peeved, you know, I will take a few hours before I respond too. But nowadays, now that I'm older, I don't feel so compelled to respond to everything. Not like you do when you're younger, right? Mm -hmm, right. Like not everything deserves a response that's true. or needs a response mm -hmm. you know but um but so on the girls inc studio instagram account we posted a little video a few days ago of me tattooing an eyebrow and we featured uh two movements that i make that i use a lot in my pot of brow work well actually all the work procedures that i do circular movements and the shoveling movements. Mm -hmm. And it was what, like a 30, 20, 30 second video, Olivia? Yeah. And it got like almost 7,000 views and, um, and great comments, lots of great feedback. And um, we interacted with all, all the uh, messaging and comments and whatnot. But there was some comments mm -hmm. that struck me. No, and let me put out there first that none of them were offensive, rude, snide, not in any way. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. At all. But I, I, just, I just felt there was some misconceptions, maybe, about these two movements with some of the comments. I agree with that, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I thought, what a great podcast uh -huh. to kind of highlight those questions posed and clear some things up and talk about it. Does that sound good to you? It sounds excellent to me. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> I'm probably going to do most of the talking today. <laughs> you will. <laughs> the, I know. I, I think I always do. <laughs> well, when it comes to PMU. Right. When it comes to shopping. When it comes to shopping, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't speak. <laughs> you just listen. <laughs> I just listen and, yeah, I, I do what I'm told. Okay. So the premise was a little 30-second video of me tattooing an eyebrow highlighting and featuring and talking about explaining both the circular movement and the shoveling movement so the circular movement is like you know exactly what it sounds like moving your needle in cir circles circular movements and then the shoveling movement is a little bit of a back and forth movement um with your needle so let me see so the comment that's, You're going to read the comment? I'm going to read the comment. Okay. Yeah. And and I didn't write down, like, who said the comment. I mean, they can probably go to this post and look it up. But li like I said, um, it was absolutely nothing offensive whatsoever. That's not why I'm talking about this. I just I just found it kind of fascinating. Mm -hmm. and, and it struck me, and I thought this would be just uh, some really good material to talk about. Mm -hmm. and in, Maybe clarify a little. Maybe clarify a little and enlighten people. Mm -hmm. And I love, 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 love talking about PMU and tattooing and movements and needles and color and everything PMU, right? Every chance I get. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> Even on our dates, you have to warn me, no talking about, about PMU or work <laughs> when we have our date night. But it's really hard for me. Yeah, it's hard for me too. <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. right? <laughs> Okay, so uh, the, the one comment, let's start with this comment. The one's comment, it started out, she says, old school versus new school. It's a technique I use to get more remplissage, remplissage, and I had to look that up. Mm -hmm. So it's a French word that means more filling or padding. Mm -hmm. Pretty so, word. Mm -hmm. Very pretty word. So... The word to key in on here, old school versus new school. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, huh, she thinks the way I'm moving or tattooing is old school. Mm -hmm. Or does she think it's new school? Oh, right. It didn't really. Yeah, I would have assumed she thought it was old school also, yeah, but maybe I think she, she doesn't. No, but I think she did. My first instinct is, oh, she's. Uh, terming these movements as old school. Mm -hmm. So that's our comment. Old school versus new school. It's a technique I use to get more remplissage. And it, it's probably pronounced a whole lot prettier than that, like rem remplissage, right? <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying it like, <laughs> like a New Englander, right? But it means more filling, which she's correct. She's absolutely correct. Like when you combine the circular movement with a larger needle. There is mm -hmm. no movement needle combination that implants more color than that. Right. The circular movement combined with a larger needle, like a large shader or a mag needle. No movement technique combo implants more pigment than that, than that combo, right? Right. And what needle technique implants the least amount of pigment? Single needle pointillism. Right. Right. Okay, so I she was. That. Huh? <laughs> I knew that. You knew that. <laughs> <laughs> so she was absolutely correct, and it wasn't a rude comment. It was just a statement, and I didn't take it as rude, at all. Um, but then right after that comment, a gal, Wendy, she posted this, and she tagged me. Do you agree that the difference between old school powder brows and new school powder brows? Are these techniques and depth? Hmm. So then I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. You're on. <laughs> yeah, they think, they uh -huh. do think, well, well, I'm not saying Wendy uh -huh. thinks that. She's asking me. Right. I think she um, also took that first comment as the circular and the shoveling movement are old, yeah. are old school. So she was just asking me, do I agree? that the difference between old school powder brows and new school powder brows are those techniques and depth. And I couldn't get that out of my mind, All right? I mean, I woke up the next morning and I told you about it. Yeah. Yeah. I had already read it. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what, 
I mean, I know you're not a tattooer, but you've just been around me and, and, and PMU, like, you know, for so many years. You could do it if you didn't have a thing with blood. Um, you, I know, and you'd probably be really, really good at it because you got a good eye for detail and symmetry. And you know all the theory behind everything we do in PMU because you've right. just been hanging around me like all these years. But what what were what were your first thoughts when you? I was my first thoughts were that that's what uh, traditional tattoo artists do, and that's where you're that's where you learned it from. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's exactly right. I so let's go back like 21 years mm-hmm. when. I was learning PMU and I learned from a few different PMU people. I had my initial trainer. I did that the six month apprenticeship with a permanent makeup lady here in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I was taught these scratching type sporadic type movements. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and then I got with, um, I got with other trainers in PMU and, and that's just what I was taught. That's what the PMU industry, or at least the ones I was coming in in contact with, making contact with, were, were moving. I can't even explain the movements. They were just these little scratchy, mm-hmm. and I don't mean scratchy, I don't want that to sound offensive, but just these sporadic sketching kind of movements. Well, that's probably what they learned as well, right? Yeah, so. yeah. And then about a year and a half into per- PMU, I went into a full-on body tattoo apprenticeship with one of the best body tattoo artists in Vegas, Eddie Lynn. I totally oh. remember that. That's when you and I started dating, so I remember that. Very yeah. Well. Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, Eddie wanted me to tattoo his mom's eyebrows, and I'm using those movements. And he was just like, what the hell is that? <laughs> So he was totally watching you. He was like totally watching me while I'm tattooing his mom, you know. And uh, and then in that body tattoo apprenticeship, uh, that's where I learned, sh- you know, circular movements, whip shading, pendulum, uh, pointillism. Because in, in, in body tattoo work, they don't call it pointillism. They call it stippling or dot work. Mm-hmm. But it's the same thing. It's pointillism. Mm-hmm. In PMU, we, we call it pointillism. So I learned all those movements in 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 my traditional tattoo apprenticeship and training and i just started uh for a while i was making those kind of sketchy type movements for pmu during the day and then when i would go to the tattoo shop and tattoo you know body tattoo clients i was using these new movements that i learned you know from from eddie i thought they were very separate Uh and i thought well this is what you do in pmu Uh and this is what you do in body tattoo and it was very separate even the machines uh-huh. were very separate back then remember oh, yes. i totally remember you had those pmu machines uh-huh. that were thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and i remember uh, the one you had didn't last it didn't last yeah. i had one of those little kps i think and yeah. um i remember my very first machine i don't even know what brand the needle came flying out of it for pete's sake you know <laughs> i think it was like 99 dollars. but anyway everything was just so separate back then And, you know, I even, um, I even trained with Margie Grimm, Mm -hmm. you know, and Margie, great tattooer. She did beautiful permanent makeup. Yes, she did. Excellent Mm -hmm. mentor and teacher to me, but she even made those same movements, um, those same type movements. And then, and I was hanging out with Margie a lot, learning a lot from her and, uh, I was a sponge with her, remember? Because yeah. she just had all this wonderful knowledge and theory stuff. And she did, just did beautiful work. And then I didn't see Margie for a while. Maybe a year, year and a half, because I was deep into body tattooing. Yeah. Learning all these new movements. So then I go back down to San Jose and I hang out with Margie. And we used to do this thing where she would bring in a model and we would just kind of tattoo and share techniques. She would invite, she would invite Don, mm-hmm. right? Don yeah. Marrero. And I'm now moving completely different. I'm doing circular, whip shading, shoveling. And do you remember when Margie was like, hold up, wait a minute. What the, yeah, what the hell are I you totally doing? Remember. What the hell are you doing? What's, what's uh-huh. that? What's that? What are those moves? 
And I would tell, I said, well, this is what we do in body tattoo. Is what you I were doing her eyebrows or something? Were you, I was or doing her eyebrows or her eyeliner. It was yeah. on her eyeliner. Yeah. And uh, that was, and I did her eyeliner and I did it like maybe about 45 minutes before I had to go hop a plane to get back to Vegas. And I remember her emailing me say, well, it's day two and all the color is still there, but, 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 but yet, you know, final, you know, we need to wait, you know, another week uh-huh. before I'll give this, you know, final, final results. And, uh, and then she emailed me, you know, maybe seven or eight days later and mm-hmm. was like, holy heck, you know, all the colors there. I've had this done several times. There's never been this kind of color here. You got to come back down here and teach me what you did. So I did. Dawn flew back in again. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I was just tattooing her and doing my movements. She booked a model and I was teaching her, you know, my new techniques, my new way of moving needles Mm -hmm. uh, that I learned, you know, in body tattooing. I have a question for you. What did Eddie Lynn think of you doing that type of movement on his mom, the the Uh, PE movement? He he immediately correct me and asked me, what was that? You know, like, like almost like he wanted me to give a name to it. And I'm like, well, I don't know. (laughs) And he's like, well, it's not circular. It's not shoveling. It's not whip shooting. It's not pendulum, you know, because there's names to the movements, right. the, the, the techniques mm-hmm. that we use. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, it was just what I was taught. And, uh, and he corrected me and he started showing me how to do, mm. you know, uh, movements, you know, legit tattoo movements, uh, which I just crossed over right over into all my PMU mm-hmm. work eventually. And that's what changed the game for me. But anyway, so with Margie and I remember Margie wanted me to name that technique and 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 kind of claim it as my technique and name it do you remember all that and I was so flattered right right? because you know it meant a lot that she really uh, appreciated you know these techniques that I learned and she saw the value in them and and what they could produce but I kept trying to tell her Margie I can't name them and claim them they're tattoo movements Uh And I remember we went out to dinner and we were all so excited. Margie was excited. I was excited. Uh, We decided to do an eyeliner class Uh and teach these new techniques, Uh right? They were new to PMU PMU, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Um, And... This is a long time ago. Oh, this is 21 years ago. Right. 21 years ago. And, 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 and there you have it, you know, and, and that's just a little bit, a little bit of history. So, um, so my answer to, do I think those, uh, movements and do I think they're old school? And I think, I think, no, I think the techniques themselves and the depth in which we implant color, it is not old school nor new school. Those are core fundamental tattoo movements that have been used in body tattooing for over a hundred years. I think the style that we give you know, whether it's a solid, thick eye, skinny brows, I think the style or the look that we're giving can be labeled as old school versus new school. Remember when I first started, it mm-hmm. was that super solid look. There was no ombre. Right. 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 So that super solid sticker look, maybe that could be considered an old school look. Mm-hmm. Um, really skinny brows like Pamela Anderson. Those were popular still when I entered PMU. Those were huge, yes. Those are huge. That could be considered, could that be considered an old school look? At this point, yes. At this point, yeah. yeah. Or a trend mm-hmm. or a fad, mm-hmm. right? Or an old school look, I guess. So I think the look, the style can be considered old school, new school, but not the movements, but not the movements and not the depth. Right. I, and I, I think, you know, look, the, the, the six core movements we make in both body tattooing and PMU is circular shoveling, pointillism, whip shading, pendulum, 
and then line work. Mm -hmm. in, in tr and that's the only little difference when it comes to line work. In body tattooing, we do line work, which is a little bit different of a technique than hair strokes. Right. Right. But it's that linear singular, mm -hmm. that linear movement. So we move a little bit differently to create the hair stroke. We call it the hair stroke movement in PMU and in body tattooing, it's line work. And it's just continuous line forming shapes that will form, you know, the shape of a tattoo, a tattoo design. So, but other than that, it's, it's those six core movements. And I, I, I and so why do you think PMU or some PMU artists consider it old school? Do you think it's because they don't do it? I'm, I'm wondering if it's because they don't do it. They're, it the industry is just predominantly not being taught yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I don't want anybody to get offended uh, by, by what I'm going to say, um, because I think there is some truth into this. And... Um, you know, and I, I, I am, you know, diehard PMU and it's my, my big love. Uh, but I think the PMU industry has been a little behind on catching up with techniques, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that includes machines. Mm -hmm. It includes needles. It includes a lot of things. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, I th and I think because it was so separate. I mean, the PMU launched kind of a, as its own industry mm -hmm. many, 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 many years separate ago. Separate from the tattoo industry. Separate from the mm -hmm. tattoo industry. And I think the leaders of the industry back then wanted to keep it separate. And they came up with their own ways of mm -hmm. doing things and 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 whatnot like these you know very expensive digital machines these very expensive needles and all the needles were liners they didn't really have mm -hmm. you know woven mags and and shaders you know back then it was predominantly liners small needles mm -hmm. expensive machines um they weren't doing all the movements and creating all these looks and i think it's i think the indus uh, the pmu industry has progressed a little bit slowly can I, can I ask you something? Yeah. Do you think it's because also the tattoo industry way back then, I'm not saying now, but was less accepting also? Yeah, the, the tattoo industry was definitely less accepting. You remember when I used to be mm. deep into body tattooing and deep into PMU, when I would go hang out at the body tattoo or body tattooers, I mean, they would make fun of PMU. Right. And and and, and the way the PMU industry was and the, and the types of needles they used. And, and it used to be, you know, hard on me to listen to that. Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side, you know, when I was hanging out at PMU conventions, uh -huh. and so I, would, I would have to listen to them call out coil machines as jackhammers. And, oh, yeah. And it caused... Mm -hmm blood splatter all over your face so they would you know wear these big huge masks and medical gowns and mm -hmm. um it was just it was just hard back then because it was so segregated it just felt like both industries just didn't respect each other and uh, but but uh, but it's changed yeah and, now, which is great uh, which is great and uh, which is great and i i think there i think i th i think there's a little bit more work to do mm -hmm. right yeah. a little bit more work to do um, but wow, I mean, mm -hmm. and I'm so grateful that this has happened in my lifetime because it's what I wanted for the PMU industry so badly. Well, cause both industries can also grow from each other, right? From each other. Yeah. We can learn from each other. And I mean, you know, and I, I'd like to think, and I hope this doesn't sound arrogant, but I would, I, I would like to think that I had something to do with the growth of PMU, like introducing, you know, these movements and teaching them to everyone that I came across, you know, uh, diluting pigments, mm -hmm. you know, no, everybody thought everybody in PMU that was hanging out with in PMU 20 years old thought I was out of my, my mind weakening pigments and diluting pigments. Cause back then it was taking, you know, the typical PMU artists three sessions. Right. I remember taking a lip class Yes. Mm -hmm. and them saying, Oh, it's normal to have to do a lip three or four times. I'm like, Oh hell not in my world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, no way. Mm -hmm. If I have to do a client three or four times to get any lip color to stick, mm -hmm. I'm quitting lips, mm -hmm. Yeah. you know? And that's when, you know, and, 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 and my lip work, 
changed overnight the minute I got bigger needles and those circular movements, the whip shading movements in my hand, you know, and started, you know, really, you know, uh, putting those to practice. But yeah, so I think, I think the PMU industry has been a little resistant in ad- accepting and uh, trying these new techniques. It is changing, mm-hmm. but I think they've been a little resistant. But look at them now. Most of the industry now, I mean, come on, we're using these pens and ro- modern rotary machines. Fantastic machines. From fantastic machines that are a fraction of the price. High quality. S- high quality. And they're all from the body tattoo industry, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we're using way more needle configurations now. I know there's a huge trend with the with single, single needle right yeah. now, and that's okay. But and the three shader. And yes. the three shader, yeah. But, you know, you're seeing more more PMU artists now, you know, picking up mags for the mm-hmm. first time, or they're at least curious and want, want to explore, you know, bigger needles. I got a, we got an email today, someone that took my powder brow course, and... You know, she was just not digging the single needle and having a very difficult time and got a seven shader in her hand and a whole new world opened up for her. She was just, she actually said, I was about to give up Mm. because I just Mm. couldn't get good results with the single needle. And I thought it was me. And she was like, come to find out, I just, the single needle just wasn't meant for me. It wasn't me. That's just not my needle i needed to explore and find another needle her niche yeah her knit you know and she did that by taking my powder brow course and she's i know (laughs) it 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 makes me a little flaclempt when i hear that because that's a career that or you know someone i mean significantly changed her Mm -hmm. you know really helped her and uh so yeah so she's digging the the seven shader um so yeah so i think i think i think that's I think that's, you know, my two cents on that. Um, what else am I going to say? Let me see. So movements. No, I don't think it's old school versus new school. I think those are the movements for both body tattoo, those six mm-hmm. core movements are the movements, the, the technique in which we can move a needle and get good results. They all give a slightly different result. Uh, those are the six core movements for body tattooing and PMU. doesn't matter. Those are the movements. All are of equal value, right? Right. You're going to be better at some movements and use some movements more than other movements, but I think it's important to learn. All of them. All of them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the other thing that I see with the PMU industry, PMU artists. They tend to box themselves into only one or two types of needles, one or two types of techniques. Mm -hmm. Whereas in body tattooing, body tattoo artists are more open in um, exploring and uh, using multiple needle configurations, Mm -hmm. multiple techniques. And that's how you become versatile. Mm -hmm. So that's always been uh, my platform, you know, in my, my, my preach. Uh, stay curious. If you're not curious, get curious, right? Curiosity Mm -hmm. leads leads to discovery Mm -hmm. and discovery can open you up to a whole new world of a whole lot of things that you didn't even know existed inside of you as an artist. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it sounds like, okay, it could also save some time. Right? Yeah, it can save some time. Some people don't care about that. Look yeah. at Na. Na loves that single needle. And Michonne. And whip shading. Mm-hmm. And she don't care. It takes her two, three hours. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's just, She just loves the time involved and the whole process of learning. Oh, and she does beautiful work. And brows. she does beautiful work. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and it's, and it's not uh, anything, any type, any technique, any needle is wrong or right or indifferent that that is it's not it's not about that there's so many different techniques movement and ways of working that will all get you to a beautiful result and that's what matters Mm -hmm. is your secret sauce the needle you're choosing the movements you're choosing is that getting you to the to those beautiful results 
that you want for both yourself as an artist and your client, right? Mm -hmm. And if it is, you know, that's awesome. Right, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's our ultimate goal as artists, right? And I think that's what one of the things I love most about PMU. It's just fascinating how many different artists work so differently and are all producing beautiful results. That it just fascinates me. And I love watching artists and so many talented artists, so, so many so talented artists many. that do things so differently than I, mm -hmm. and their work is so beautiful. Stunning. Yeah. It's stunning. And it's just intriguing and fascinating. And it's one of the things I love most about PMU. And I love learning from those artists that do things very differently than I right. love, mm -hmm. love learning. I'm not going to learn, you know, you don't, you learn more from artists and people that do things differently than you mm -hmm. rather than the same the same mm -hmm. right yeah so yeah so okay so let's talk about depth so i don't think depth is old school or new school super important it's mm -hmm. yeah depth dictates our results and depth is directly tied to pigment performance, whether your pigment is going to perform at its very best or right. at its very worst, worst yeah. or somewhere in between mm -hmm. depth. But the new generation of artists are being taught to work very shallow. And I don't know why, you know, I would mm -hmm. love, to, I would love to know like, like why I can guess why maybe they're afraid of going too deep. Mm -hmm. And getting gray and blue muddy results. Mm -hmm. um, or do they think it will damage the skin? Or maybe I'm wondering if they think it will damage the skin. Um, and it is better to go more shallow when you're learning. Mm -hmm. You know, I say that all the time. But, um, but I think it's important if you are a newbie and, and you're going too shallow to slowly start. Like learning to swim. Like yeah. learning to swim, <laughs> right? You're not going to dive into the deep end. <laughs> the deep end, yeah. You know, like my apprentices here, I tell them all the time, I'd rather it all fall out mm -hmm. or fade out in six months, you know, than you go too deep. I'd rather you be too shallow than too deep, you know, way. Because, you know, no harm, no fall if you go too shallow, but your, your pigment's just not going to perform as well. You know, so, you know, if you go too deep, pigment is not going to heal that beautiful tone that it was manufactured to do right it's going to heal gray, gray. Mm -hmm. blue gray blue muddy because you've implanted it too deep so it's sitting too close to the vascular system there's too much uh epidermal skin dermis epidermal skin covering it and uh, it just looks like crap right gray mm. blue blue gray it can migrate Cause scar tissue. Too. Cause scar tissue and skin damage, which is the biggest thing. So you definitely don't want to go too deep. On the flip side, you go too shallow mm -hmm. and either. Orange. Yeah, mm -hmm. it can, right. If it stays in the skin, right. if it stays in the skin, then it can end up aging, looking too warm mm -hmm. in a few months or six months. It won't last as long as it should. It can all fall out during the healing process and you end up with nothing but uh, discolored skin from uh, the trauma the needle caused. Mm -hmm. um, and when you go too shallow, a lot of times, you know, the, the artist will say, well, it turned orange. Well, it didn't turn orange. You know, this particular color doesn't turn orange. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's, no orange. It, there's no orange in it. It doesn't turn orange. But because they implanted so shallow... That pigment didn't last. It was too close to the surface of the mm -hmm. skin. It was only in the epidermal skin. It sloughed off, you know, because epidermal skin renews itself. And maybe in six months, eight months, 10 months, the pigment all got sloughed off. And why it might look warm or discolored, it's not that the pigment turned, it's that that skin was wounded with a needle mm -hmm. six months, 10 months, you know, back. And on that particular client, 
that discoloration, it didn't heal away. Right. And now there's no pigment covering it up. Right. Right. So now you're just seeing wounded skin. So even though you go shallow, you can still have trauma. Oh, absolutely. Right. You can still have trauma. Okay. Oh, for sure. But, uh, absolutely. Because you're breaking that top epidermal layer of skin. So you're causing trauma, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, so depth is not old school, new school. I think there's proper depth and it's in that upper dermal layer. And I'm not saying you're wrong if you don't go down to that upper dermal layer and you like to tattoo more shallow. I don't think that's wrong per mm -hmm. se. I would never tell anybody, well, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, that's your technique of tattooing. That's where you like to place it. Uh, but what I do think is pigments don't perform at their best when they are implanted so shallow. They don't last as long as they should, and they don't perform at their best. And a couple of different pigment chemists have, you know, we've had these conversations with chemists, right? you know, about, about that, you mm -hmm. know, with, with pigments. So, yeah. So that's my two takes on old school versus new school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mind being an old school artist. I, I think maybe I'm a little old school with a new school edge. I, I think that's how I like to. Yeah. I think that would be a really good description. Yeah. Of me, right? Yeah. Because I'm fascinated with all the, I mean, the, the minute the single needle got popular, what I do? Whip one out yeah. and I tattooed a heart on you with yeah. a single needle. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, right? Because I want to learn all the new school stuff. I want to stay relevant. I think it's important to stay relevant. And I just have that inner desire, craving, obsession, whatever you want to call it to stay relevant. I don't discard any new style, technique, needle, n nothing. I want to, I want to learn it and I want, I want to know all about it. And I want to try it. Mm -hmm. It might not be for me. Come to find out. Sometimes it's not. And then other times it's like, oh my God, like I'm totally digging this. All right. So let's get off that. So there was a couple other comments do you have anything else you want to say about no, that? No, I was wondering if you're going to read any of those comments. Yeah, that so would I got. Be nice. Okay, so okay, so there was two other comments that I want to I want to talk about. Oh, first, let me let me make this announcement, or Art's going to kill me. I have to make <laughs> these new announcements now. All right, viewers, thank you for joining us today. Uh, to catch our podcast, this episode, and all uh, Tatter Effect episodes. Go to our YouTube channel, Tatter of Fact, and please like this episode and follow our channel. Your likes and follows, they're super important to us and they mean a lot to us. We appreciate it. You can stream us on Spotify, iTunes, Buzzsprout, and Podcast Attic when you're exercising, walking the dog, things like that. You can audio stream us. But if you want to see what Kat and I are wearing today, you're going to have to go to our YouTube channel. <laughs> so thank you guys very much. All right. So another comment I got was, won't, it was a question, won't this technique give the client a too solid look? And not necessarily, right. maybe it could on super dry skin that takes pigment a little too well if I was using full strength pigment. Right. But in this particular post, I was using diluted pigment. We even had the diluted pigment caps in the video. And I talked about that I was using diluted pigment. So because I was using big needles, well, even though I was using big needles, even though I was using a large, you know, eight shader, because I was diluting that pigment way down, right? 80% soft effects, dilution solution, only 20% pigment. No, there's no way I'm going to get too solid of a look. That brow is going to heal super soft and powdery. So there's very little color in your cap. Yeah. 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 In that pigment cap, there's, you know, one cap is like 50, 50, 50% 50 pigment. 50% dilution solution. And, you know, we use soft effects. I love soft effects. And then in one cap, 15 to 20% pigment, that's it. And the rest, I feel the cap 
the rest up with soft effects, dilution. So there's not a lot of pigment in that cap. I'm not tattooing with full strength pigment or even a lot of pigment. And so, which is, which is a great technique. I learned that in body tattooing, right? Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, something I was able to teach a lot of my PMU colleagues, you know, back in the day, 20 mm -hmm. years ago. I remember somebody asking you to make a chart. <laughs> and to make a chart, and I did, right? Uh -huh. And it's become pretty popular in, in, in PMU now. Yeah. You know, it's still way popular. I mean, they do it daily in body tattooing. You know, that's how they, you know, with black and gray work. You know, they're but not... they don't use soft effects. They use... But they use witch hazel or there's dilution solutions they now. They get to stir it all the time. Yeah, though. they get to stir it all the time. That's why I had LI pigments make soft effects. So, so we don't have time. to stir it all the time. It doesn't separate from yeah. the pigment. But it's a great way. So I think a lot of artists are under the illusion, uh, impression that you can only get a super soft look or an ombre if you use single needle in whip shading. And, and no, mm. you can get that look, yes, whip shading, Pendulum, single needle, amazing way to get that look. A super soft look, powdery look. But you can also use big needles, circles, and shoveling and just dilute your pigment way down and get a super soft, powdery look. And that's how I do a lot of my ombres. I'll use full strength pigment in the tail, maybe 50-50 through the body. And when I get to that bulb area, 10, 15% pigment and the rest diluted. Mm -hmm. And that, and it heals like to a beautiful transition brow, you know, soft in the bulb. And by the time it gets to the tail, it's, it's a little more fuller with mm -hmm. pigment. Because that's where you, lo you lose your color to first, isn't it? The tail, you usually lose your color. First. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually you, you lose your color first in the tail. So better to have. When, when tails age, usually mm -hmm. that's the first place it fades out in is in the tail. Something about that skin in the temple, you know, that temple area. I don't know what it is, but. That's just been my experience, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, yeah, and the only time I use, like, the same dilution, like, super diluted through a whole brow is if the brow has hair throughout, but it's sparse, you know? Mm -hmm. Then I'll just use, you know, same dilution, highly, highly diluted, and just put a little powdery backdrop, you know? Classic powder. It looks powder. so natural. It looks yeah. so natural. It looks so good. It takes me 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes me 20 minutes. So for all you listening, if the single needle, you're struggling with it, you know, I mean, you know, jump on a shader, learn to dilute pigments, you know, and uh, it, it's just a fantastic technique that you incorporate into your work with a single needle, you know. Um, it's not that you'll stop using single needle and at, at all. Uh, it's just it's just a, another, another option, you know, mm -hmm. being versatile. So, okay. So we answered that question, right? Yes. Okay. So one more question. Okay. Okay. So this was the question. Hang on. Let me get a drink of water. I hope I didn't slurp there. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> Did I slurp a little bit? Yeah. I, <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> so classy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this was a comment. Okay. Great movements, but... They must be done with caution because too much ink put into the skin won't leave room for future color refreshes or adjustments. Hmm. Okay, good question. Very good, good question. Statement. Yeah, yeah. Good statement. And she complimented the movement. So again, these comments, I'm not reading these because they're rude, offensive, or mm -hmm. off the wall. These are great comments. It's just... And, and great insight, great questions. Well, I think a lot of people learn from this too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so I thought, man, this is going to be a great podcast, you know, talking about these things. Um, and I'm really grateful. And, and if you figure out that, you know, one of your comments or questions is something I asked, you know, or talked about or highlighted on this podcast, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. Because everybody was so great on that post. Every now and then, you know, you'll get an asshole on a post if they don't agree. You know, some people that don't agree with you, I mean, they're assholes. Right. And then they get mean. Right. Um, but on this post, you know, there was a few people that maybe didn't quite like those movements or, or you know. Didn't quite agree or whatever. Yeah, whatever. But everyone was just so awesome about it. And they... Um, uh, they came at it with kindness. They came at it with kindness. They expressed mm -hmm. themselves with, with, with kindness. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that. And I, and I love that. 
So great movements, but must be done with caution because too much ink put in the skin won't leave room for future color refreshes or adjustments. So what I would say to that is, um, once again, I diluted the pigment. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going in with full strength pigment. Mm -hmm. So there's hardly any pigment particles per se being right. implanted in the skin. So we're not going to have that problem. Now, if I was going in with full strength pigment, then maybe she might be on to something, especially if it was full strength pigment with a lot of titanium. Mm, yes. Because we know titanium has a larger molecule. Uh, molecule. Mm -hmm. Takes up a lot of space in the skin. And that stuff don't want to leave skin. Right. It just kind of floats to the top and kind of sits there. And it's the, it just doesn't want to leave skin. It has a light fastness of like, you know, seven or eight, like eight. It just doesn't want to leave skin. I'm not saying it doesn't, but it's really super stubborn. So L-line doesn't make, you know, I don't work with pigments with a lot of titanium. Um, so, and the pigments were diluted. Uh -huh. And what I discovered with dilute and pigment, and I used to get this question a lot, and I still get it from time to time. Because you're diluting the pigment, will the brow not last as long? Okay, good question. Too. Great question, right? Mm -hmm. And it took me about four or five years before I could answer that um, with confidence and feel I'm giving a correct answer. And no, it doesn't fade out any faster just because you're diluting it. The pigment particle is still there in the skin. It's just more dispersed in the skin because we've diluted it. And of course, I'm using an eight, an eight shader needle, mm -hmm. which also disperses and spreads, spreads pigment mm -hmm. in, in the skin, right? So no, uh, a diluted pigment will last typically pretty much as long as a full strength pigment. And that is true in body tattooing. You know, when you're looking at black and gray work, all the gray doesn't really just leave first and you're left with only black. You typically don't see that. It typically ages cohesively. Right. As right? one. Mm -hmm. As one. Yeah. It, it will all fade in time, like everything does, but the gray doesn't fade years before the black. Mm -hmm. And that's true when we dilute pigments for brow work or a eyeliner work or a lips. That crosses over and holds true for us. I think some people don't think that you need to refresh your body tattoos, but sometimes you, you do. Oh, right? you absolutely do. Like a lot. Oh, like a lot. Oh yeah. yeah. Red, red body tattoos, you know, end up, you know, a ugly shade of pink. Mm -hmm. I mean, reds end up like orange and not good oranges. I mean, they don't fade down to pretty pinks and pretty orange, yellow. Look, I got yellow and it's almost all gone. Mm -hmm. And it's like 12 years old, you know, right. mm -hmm. and so I got to go get that refresh. So body tattoos absolutely fade, absolutely fade. But because they're super bright organics, um, and usually a lot of our body tattoos are covered up with clothing, right? right? They don't fade as fast. On our face, it's so exposed to all the elements, sun, we wash it two or three times a day. We're putting, you know, women, we're doing fillers and Botox oh, exfoliating exfoliating we're like you mm -hmm. you're in the bathroom every night for an hour putting on your ointments and mm -hmm. gels and it's serums an hour, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all the stuff you do yes. women do you know I'm I'm Our rituals yeah I'm like two and a half minutes <laughs> <laughs> I'm a wash, tone, moisturize. <laughs> oh, you do do use toner. I okay. do use my toner now. I got, okay, I got in the habit good. of it. But I'm not into all the serums and all that stuff you you, you, you do. Um, I, maybe I'll regret it one day. If but. I could drink it, I would. <laughs> I, <laughs> I know. I know you would. You, you would bathe in it and uh -huh. swim in it and drink it if, if you could. I know. But yeah. But no, I just can't be bothered with it. I just can't be bothered with it. it just seem, I don't know. I just can't be bothered with it. So anyway, back back to that question. So, no. I so I where's that question? Hang on. Let me get what did I do with that question? <laughs> it's on the bottom there. Okay. Oh yeah. So great movements, but must be done with caution because too much ink put in the skin won't leave room for future color refreshes or adjustments. So with my technique, with those movements, 
and it's diluted pigment. Not really a worry, not using pigments with a lot of titanium. So not really a concern. We don't have to worry about that. And the other thing I wanted to point out is when you put pigment in the skin with those movements, it's kind of a packing movement. Mm -hmm. It lasts way longer, mm -hmm. way longer than brows done with a single needle. Right. So there's, uh, it, there's a long time in between refreshes where with single needle work, um, I think on average, it's about a year and a half. Mm. I think that's what non, you know, Mary, you know, all my friends that use single needle say about a year and Monica Vani, she's about a year and a half. Right. Right. And here at the girls Inc. studio and everybody that does, you know, big needles and more circular movements, we're about three years, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes longer. Right. Three to five years, every now and then, maybe 10% of the time, year and a half, two years. Two years and that's yeah. someone that's got, you know, maybe scar tissue or super oily skin. Mm -hmm. That's not the norm. Right. So we have a long time, in, much longer time in between our refreshes. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so it's not, it's not really a concern. But I thought that was a great statement. And I do, and I'll add one more little thing to that. I think no matter what technique, what movement, what depth, what, 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 mm -hmm. we always have to approach with caution. Yeah. You know, if you're using a single needle, you have to approach that with caution. You can, you know, you can overwork the skin, you know, with a single needle, an eight shader, a five liner, an 11 mag, you can go too, too deep with any needle, um, you know, no matter what technique what needle what movement whatever you have to be cautious with everything right and every yeah. single person you work on is a completely different case and no you know two clients are the same for no sure. two clients are the same so what may have always gone really well for you on 100 clients might not go so well for you on that 101 client yeah you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so yeah so that's that okay so um was that it? Yeah, that was that was really it. That was that, those were some of the things that I wanted to talk about. And let me see. Um, I was telling Olivia this, but there were there were also uh, I'll, I'll I'll tell you about a little interaction. So, so someone did go on and was like, I'm, I'm not really a fan of those movements. Kind of that's what they said. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really a fan of those movements unless you want to get a solid brow. And that was it. Mm -hmm. And then you know me. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I go in with my love and my charm, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's better in person with my New England accent, but <laughs> uh, but I went in and and I, I I thanked him and I you know and I I just said you know you're absolutely right if you're using full strength pigment and you're moving your hand really slow you could certainly get too solid of an eyebrow, mm -hmm. but here I'm using, you know, highly diluted pigment. I'm moving my hand a little faster. So there's no chance of that. I'm going to get a super soft powdery brow. And, uh, and this is my way of getting to a super soft powdery brow. And I didn't know if they would respond or not. And they came back mm -hmm. and with hearts, Mm -hmm. and said, you're absolutely right. And I didn't think of that. And um, thank you for pointing that out. And we all work so different. And yet we all can get beautiful techniques. One way is not the not one way someone's work. One way someone likes to work definitely doesn't mean it's the best way. And then I went back That's in. That's great. Isn't uh -huh. that great? That's great. And then I went back in and I said, you're absolutely right. And, you know, and just poured on the charm and just said, that's one of my things I love most about PMU is all the different ways we artists work and, and all those different ways lead to a beautiful result. Mm -hmm. And it's just so intriguing and so fascinating. And, and it's very nice to make your acquaintance. And they came back one more time and said, very nice to make your acquaintance. Aw. Aw. 
And I th- and I was telling you about that today, Olivia. And mm-hmm. that little exchange just really meant a lot to me. That exchange could have gone very wrong right. if I was the type of person that took offense and went in aggressively. Aggressive, yeah. And a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. They that's res- why it goes awry. Yeah. That's why it goes awry. They respond aggressively. Mm-hmm. They get offensive, offended, and they just respond aggressively, and they want to be right. And, you know, you it's... You kind of have to retrain yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like... I just, I don't know. You don't make friends and good colleagues by responding aggressively to even things that you don't agree with. Right. Or maybe were written or posted in a way that isn't correct or you don't find truth in. And I'm sure a lot of people take that home with them too, right? Yeah. They get themselves upset. They go back after these people and then they end up, Taking it home with them. And take it home with them and they get online and they go back aggressively and then, and it's in their head, mm-hmm. it's in, in them, mm-hmm. right? And, and now they're stewing with it and, and yeah. And then how long is, is that going to sit with them? It's, right. it's like some people, it consumes them. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. me, not me. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. I just, I just, I just saw an opportunity to explain a little bit better, you know, mm-hmm. my technique and with hearts and, you know, and smiley emojis. And I just got the mo- a, a really friendly response back and, and it ended up being a really friendly exchange. And hopefully I made, you know, a, a nice new acquaintance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's part of that? What's the saying that's part of that? Is it better to be? Is it better to be right or is it better to be happy? Uh-huh. And where does that come from? We won't say. Oh, <laughs> come on. Everybody knows I love Dr. Phil, man. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge Dr. Phil fan. She is. Hey, he hey, he, you know, he has he has he has some really good insight that's helped me along the way. He's got some good sayings that have really helped me along the way. <laughs> he has. All right. So thank you for being here. You're welcome. Did you have fun? Oh yeah. Yeah, next time we'll drink. That's even more fun. Yeah, we'll have some... Olivia's going to have a drink too, right, Olivia? Yes. Yeah, we'll have some vodka or something. Cosmos. Some Cosmos. I make a mean Cosmo. She does. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, you guys, thank you for joining me here on A Tatter of Fact. Thanks, Kat, my beautiful wife. (laughs) Yes, for joining me today. And remember to uh, go to our channel on YouTube, Tatter of Fact, like this episode, like all our episodes. We've got lots of episodes uploaded. We even have Tatter of Fact clips where you can watch clips of all the different podcasts uh, we, we've done over the last year. And you can stream us on Spotify, iTunes, Buzzsprout, and Podcast Attic. So... You guys, I want to start leaving you. I told you I'm going to start leaving you with something to think about. And so this episode, something to think about is this. Only dead fish go with the flow. Do you like that? (laughs) It's funny. It's funny. But it's true. I mean, think about it. Only dead fish go with the flow. So do you do right, stay genuine, stay authentic. I think people today are craving authenticity They're craving it. So stay you, stay authentic, and stay in the pursuit of happiness. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next time on A Tatter of Fact. (laughs) 